Hello, Driving Tells community. If there was ever a time for me to be in my liquor room, this is it. Earlier this year, I ended up with a no third gear issue on my 4 70W transmission in my 2002 10th generation F-150. And these transmissions can be found in a multitude of Ford vehicles like Mustangs, Explorers. I think even the Expedition may have them in there, but many, many vehicles have this, Crown Vicks. With the third gear being gone, I pulled the transmission, rebuilt it, and I rebuilt it religiously to all the specs, put it back in, ended up with, again, no third gear. Now, I was really scratching my head because I followed all the instructions, pulled that transmission again, and found out that one of the seals in the Ford Direct Drum had shifted, relocated itself, and it wouldn't allow that clutch pack to lock up. Well, I put it all back in, and I've got first through fourth running perfectly, but then I ended up with a different problem. The torque converter would lock up very aggressively, and it would be a delayed lockup. And this is quite frustrating for me, because as of this video, I'm going to have to have pulled the, uh, the valve body out of that transmission about five times. At least for this issue, I don't have to pull the transmission again. But I thought this would be a really interesting video for many of you out there, because if you go onto the internet and you say uh, torque converter um, shutter, for example, you'll end up with a lot of uh, search results and they, they come up with anything from a worn out transmission, worn out torque converter. There could be a whole multitude of things. And I've done a whole lot of videos on this that you can find in my 4R70W playlist that's linked in the description of this video. Uh, but when I originally did valve body work, I ended up with this, this aggressive shift. I wasn't ending up with the delayed torque converter lockup, but I had an aggressive lockup. And I just thought that, you know, I was just gonna have to live with this because it's an old transmission and that's what I'm dealing with. Well, I called Sonax, who makes a lot of different parts. Uh, they were the company that I bought what they call their zip kit from, which basically takes care of all of the, uh, the fluid management issues in these transmissions, uh, and especially some of the weak points within the transmission body itself. And they told me I needed to try this valve and this is part of the, uh, the torque converter bypass circuit. And if you can believe it, this little valve right here that's going to go into the, uh, the valve body is going to hopefully resolve my problem. Now, the one that came with the zip kit gives you a much firmer lockup, a much quicker, snappier lockup on your torque converter uh, for overdrive. And uh, for me, it's much too aggressive. And, and quite frankly, it actually delays it. It takes a significant amount of time for my torque converter to actually lock up. So if any of you are having problems with a shutter, this may be the issue where you don't have to pull your transmission to put a new torque converter in it or to rebuild it. And again, I suggest you go look at all the videos that I put in my 470W playlist to see if those help you. But this is relatively simple. It's just a messy job. I've got to pull the valve body. I got to disassemble the valve body. Of course, make sure everything's clean. Insert this, reinstall it, and I should be good to go. So follow along with me. I'm going to quickly take a quick bourbon to get myself prepared for this, this repair. And then we'll go down to the garage and get it done. As I was editing this video for upload to YouTube, it occurred to me that I need to clarify something. If you have a high mileage transmission and you're dealing with overdrive shutter, it's probably likely due to wear in the, in the torque converter and the transmission. And a lot of the videos in my 470W list, especially the ones at the top of the list, are more appropriate to you. This modification is what I'm using to resolve some conflicts that came out of my modification of the valve body. So I've got a brand new transmission and the shutter or the impact from the torque converter is because of the modification not because of age and wear so make sure you understand that clarification again go back to the the playlist that i've mentioned I'll, i've mentioned and i will mention several times in this video very important but this is for modification of a, a modified valve body that is shifting too harshly in order to do this project, I've got to get to the valve body. And as you see here, this is the transmission pan for the 470W. This one's unique. It's a Dorman unit that I've recommended many times. I'm going to link it in the description of this video. Comes with a drain plug, which makes it super easy to get the fluid out so you can reuse it, keep it clean. Otherwise, dropping this pan is going to be a damn disaster because you got to keep it out level. It's going to spill everywhere, make a mess. This is a much cleaner and easier way to get the pan off even if you're just doing a fluid change and filter change. Pan is removed, no must, no fuss. I don't have any fluid anywhere where it doesn't belong. 
Uh, I got to pull the filter next, but you can see that there is no fluid drippage anywhere else. So again, that dormant pan makes a big difference. So get you one out of the link in my description. After I pull that filter, then I got to pull the valve body. But what I'm going to do first is just crack all the bolts. That's going to release some additional fluid that's up there in the case. And I'm going to put this pan back up there after I crack it. And that uh, will help me collect it in the pan before I, uh, I fully release or remove that, uh, that valve body for the work that's got to be done on it. Filter's off and you can see there's still some fluid dripping out of there into the pan. So I'm gonna let that drip a little bit. In the meantime, I need to take off this strap and that just needs to be carefully pried off with a screwdriver. This uh, shift pawl is gonna to have to be removed completely before I start cracking all the, all the bolts that hold the valve body on. So those two things need to come off definitely before I move much further. And, and then as I said, I'm gonna let it all drain out into the pan and then pull the valve body for the work. When looking at the valve body, you can be overwhelmed by the sheer number of bolts there are. The only bolts that are holding the valve body to the case are 8 millimeter bolts. Most of them are around the perimeter here. You can see them here holding on the shift pawl, as I've already mentioned. The bigger ones are not what's holding that to the case. Those are the ones that hold the sandwiched valve body assembly together. So just get your 8 millimeter socket out, go all around, find all those, take those out, but leave two, one on each end left in there after you remove all those bolts and you'll crack those and that's when all that flu additional fluid will flow out. Valve body is removed and I'm sitting it up on edge to let as much of the fluid drain out as possible just to minimize the mess. I hate working on transmissions because transmission fluid gets everywhere. But in order to disassemble this, I'm gonna to have to take off these two plates. There's one bolt right here and that'll let me get to the guts of the valve body which will allow me to get to that valve. Now with the two plates and the extra bolt taken off, all nine of those, we can just pick up this tough plate very gently. You don't want to damage the gasket. It's going to be a little bit of vacuum suction on there because of the fluid. And you want to be careful also that you don't dislocate the little check balls that are in here. And I'll show you that in just a second. With the tough plate or the separator plate removed, you can see there's still a lot of fluid in here. So just try to keep all this level. You also want to make sure the check balls are all in their proper location. And to me, it's pretty obvious. You can see the, the route that allows fluid past the check ball. There's eight of those. So make sure, actually, one of the best things to do is replace those check balls if you've got a high mileage transmission because these things degrade over time. And I'll link those in the description as well. Again, we're going to remove this valve. So we've got to remove this little retaining clip. And this is under spring pressure, so you want to be very careful when you're removing this so that you don't have things shooting across your garage and losing them. To remove it, I'm going to lightly push this in, which releases the spring pressure on that plate. That's the locking plate, and I'll pull that out with a pair of pliers. With that locking plate removed, this little bypass circuit plunger and, uh, and cap come out. Again, this is from Sonax. And you'll see that um, I'll compare them side by side, but there's a little, a little hole there and there's extra drilled hole. And that really uh, restricts the flow through the bypass circuit. Apparently, uh, you can go back to OE shifting quality with the new one. Again, let me get the other one and we'll compare them side by side. Here you can see the two valves next to each other. This one that's scored up a little bit, which has kind of surprised me, only has the two small holes. And then here you can see that this one has four holes, a new unit. And there's also a little, a little uh, cut-in section here. I thought that was for an O-ring, but it's not. Again, it must be some additional, uh, additional work that Sonax did on the design to get uh, the fluid management uh, more appropriate. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, transmission fluid to get this thing there in there nice and clean and not scratch it up. And then I can start buttoning this whole valve body up. That's, uh, that's how easy this is. Before I go further, I thought I'd show how this new valve and cap integrate into the operation of the TCC circuit. I pulled these images from the Sonax website. I'm not an expert, but here's how I think this circuit operates. What you're looking at is a cross section of the torque converter looking at it from the side of the transmission. The lock of the torque converter happens with the engagement of this part of the torque converter. When the ECU commands lockup of the torque converter, the TCC solenoid is activated and one of its functions is to reverse the flow of transmission fluid and causing an apply of the internal clutches of the torque converter. The Sonex part I'm installing located here changes fluid flow in the circuit providing softer lockup engagement. 
I've used some assembly glue. I actually pulled the plunger out and I've lubed this thing up pretty good. Again, I don't want it scored up like the other one was. And we're just gonna push it in now and put that reclaining, retaining clip back in here. Had to use two hands to gently get that thing in there, but now it's in place. And I'm just gonna put that retaining clip in there. And again, like I said, we're gonna button this thing back up. It should be good to go. Here's another tip. When you put that gasket on before you put the separator plate in, you can see that there's cutouts for those check balls to make sure that you got good fluid flow around them. So you can look at that to make sure that you still have the check balls in the right locations before you put the separator plate back on. Now I'm gonna to torque these bolts down and the specs I'm seeing are anywhere from 80 to 100 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. I'm gonna pick 90, tighten those all up, and then we'll be ready to put it back in the transmission. Now, out of curiosity, I'd be interested in the comments section below if you think that one little valve is gonna make a big difference in the torque converter lockup performance. Incidentally, I've got another video out about the failure of these solenoid packs here. I believe it's called A and B. I'll link that in the description of this video. And there is your torque converter control solenoid that uh, controls the fluid in that circuit that we just modified. Valve body is back in place and I've used a torque wrench to get all these bolts starting from the center and moving outward to 96 foot pounds. Correction, I should have said 96 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Please make a note of that. I'm gonna check that once again. And unfortunately, while I was taking out the, uh, the electric strap, I broke it, so I bought a new one. I'm gonna link this in the description of the video. And just to make sure everything's good and clean, I got myself a new Motorcraft filter. I'll link that as well, and we'll be good to go. All right, so with everything done, buttoned up, the, uh, the project is what I would call 80% successful. I still have a bit of a delayed torque converter lockup, but when it does lock up, it doesn't hammer me like it did previously, almost like a torque converter shutter that I'd had in the past uh, prior to doing a bunch of transmission work. So my recommendation is if you have transmission problems after some major work, maybe even a shift kit, and your overdrive is far too aggressive, your overdrive lockup, then uh, I would consider this Sonax part that I'll list in the description of this video. And don't forget to give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.